Remember when Emblem Celica was one of the craziest nukes we had in the game part due to the fact that she had 6 space warping? And now almost 3 months later we have Shield Fighter and now she's extremely manageable to deal with? Just ignore how dumb her ring is still. Do you think the shelf life of units have been decreasing more and more nowadays? I started thinking about it a fair bit after we got the Aided Hero Celebration banner with all those old duos and harmonics from last year. Because outside of maybe one or two of them, maybe like Ymir or Sanaki with proper support, they all just kind of fell off really hard. And of course, not everything is going to last forever or should last forever because that's not particularly healthy for the game in and of itself. But I think a lot of units have had their shelf lives significantly cut down over the course of this book alone, and it feels a lot faster comparatively to most other years in Fey. Of course, I'm not taking any of the generics into account because those never age anyway. <laughs> I think nowadays for a unit to really last a fair bit, you would need to design them in a nonsensical way where they're basically going to dominate their entire archetype, or you need specific tech to deal with them, or they need to have some type of gimmick that's extremely valuable to the point where that alone keeps them valuable. Somebody like Valentine's Mark could definitely fall into the latter because of her anti-warping status. As for the former, this could easily be seen with the new Fiorm, for example, who basically takes on every ranged unit in the game. I think only barring Fagato, but he isn't even a consistent counter to Fiorm because he has trouble doubling a lot of the time. And while I do think she's inevitably going to fall off as well, the biggest worry I have more than the overly dominant unit is what exactly will IS implement to counteract the the overly dominant unit. I think if anything, that's what scares me more because depending on what they design as a counter, it could have a ripple effect towards other units in a similar station. And what I have to ask is whether there are means of designing safe amounts of counters without it coming at the cost of basically every other far save in the game, at least when talking about Fiorm. It's a really interesting dilemma because for all intents and purposes, they could just drop a skill called I Hate Fiorm 4 and it basically shuts her off for good, kinda how like Farm Cancel curb shuts off Valentine's Leon for good, despite most people not really pulling for it anyway. Although, despite what potential counters IS could have in store for these types of units, I think the other part of what makes it difficult is not having the units yourself, or at least in a timely manner that allows you to keep up with the game. I think I felt this personally even within the last 2-3 to three months, seeing as I skipped a fair amount of the recent banners, and even for the ones I did summon on, I didn't get most or everything on them for it to make a substantial difference. And because because of the current pace of additions pushing the envelope more and more, as well as newer skills to help out these units function, I feel as if keeping up gets even harder nowadays. Emblems definitely have exemplified the issue of skipping banners at points because missing an emblem could be a substantial difference between whether you're going to fall behind a lot more, especially if it's Celica's ring effect. Of the three we did get between Marth, Ike, and Celica, I would argue that you could have lived without Ike's emblem effect, but Ike as a unit was and still is fairly strong and had fodder that a lot of units really wanted so by that extent he wasn't exactly skippable either or at least it was a lot harder to skip and assuming the rings will continue to take inspiration from engage i can't even imagine skipping on the potential miracle ring effect from roy or some sort of area of effect dance effect from byleth or whatever else might apply but that's more speculative than definitive at least either way they've definitely incentivized many Need to not skip if possible lately, and by the time you could grab most of these units after they've already debuted on their initial banner, it may be a bit too late. At least with the emblems though, you do get the ring effects which will generally be good no matter what. I can't imagine those will ever age poorly. Still, it's most definitely a byproduct of power creep because in order to appeal to the base and sell them things they feel are worth summoning for, they have to keep raising the ceiling, but sometimes they do it in ways that decrease the floor for many. Even several years back, Back when we had nutty, ultra powerful units that were basically everywhere, it wasn't as difficult to navigate through them, even if it meant taking creative liberties, because most of what we could do to manage was more readily available even as a free to play player. Nowadays, it feels a lot more restrictive as the most consistent means of dealing with the best of the best either requires specific units and skills or strategies that feel way too over the top for just one unit. Although I will say that for all the newer units pushing the limits of what a unit can and can't do in this game, they've also been simultaneously 
simultaneously been adding a lot of newer skill additions that make it even so the worst of the worst can still have their performance floor raised a fair bit. It's not like two years ago where the most you could settle for is a mediocre seasonal weapon and maybe some new premium A, B, or C slot that all the newer units also got, and even with the gap still being fairly significant between the generics and the premiums, the ability to use more units had increased as a result of all these new hero gimmicks and additions, so at the very least, the worst of the worst can only be so bad. Even though at the same time, you will also have to remove any and all identity from a unit to really get them to that point, at which point it just raises another question. Do they try to start appealing more and more to those types of units trying to catch up, or do they keep appealing to the meta-related things over and over? And where does the appeal lie at that point? Because maybe the reason they also appeal to the meta-related market is because the novelty of helping out older units has started waning, but that may also be because we're not at a point where investing the latest and greatest of everything into an outdated unit can allow them to work at a base level in even the most competitive game modes, and it's hard to say if we'll ever get to that point. And if we don't get to that point, there needs to be a different solution for it, because I think no matter what, you'll always need some new unit or skill, even if it's just to keep old favorites afloat for a bit. But at the same time, it also feels like it's gotten proportionally faster compared to other years, because they need to keep pushing what new units and skills can do, thus making stuff such as fear missing out a lot more commonplace and real in some aspects. It's definitely the byproduct that I mentioned earlier, more so visualized as a snowball effect, because it just keeps getting faster and faster and faster until it's just really too difficult to keep up consistently. It's why I'd argue in many ways that Book 8 is the new Book 5. Book 5 was probably one of the most well-known years of Fae, in part due to how crazy the new units and skills got, and many would remember it as the Fallen Edelgard era, which is only part of what made it memorable to many. It also had a lot of new skills and units that were really hard to pass up on due to how good they were, but at the very least by then, many of them were extremely serviceable and good even if you didn't get them on debut. On the other hand, Book 8 feels a lot more up in the air with whether a unit is going to last long enough by the time they'd run again. And in some aspects, it is nice that these overly dominant units have some counterplay after a certain point, but with how they design the counterplay, it's what makes or breaks it because I feel like what may end up replacing it could be worse than what we already started with, but really just depends on their design philosophy, which if you saw Firm Cancel Curb, it's not exactly the best. And while this isn't anything new with them, I definitely think it's been a lot more prolific as a book 8, and I'm hoping that the next time I try to pull and invest into a unit that I'll still be able to use them after a few months. And maybe the issue isn't even just whether or not these units age a lot faster, because I think in some aspects it is important, but if they end up aging a lot faster, there really isn't that much of an alternative after that point, because let's say you just have a really good unit for Aether Raids or Summoner Duels or Arena or whatever, but after a certain point they just don't really function in there anymore, there's not really much else you could do with them, at least right now, and I'm hoping that there's a mode that they inevitably drop that not only runs very frequently, but it also allows you to pretty much use everybody without really feeling bad without getting the latest and greatest thing. Seer Snare is probably the closest thing to me as like one of the best modes for this type of thing, but at the same time, it runs like every two to four months, which is basically nothing. I think if it were more of an active mode each month, I think there'd be a lot more incentive and less of a reason to really feel bad about a lot of these units kind of just falling off, because at least you'd have somewhere to use them in some way that's more rewarding. But even if it wasn't something like Seer Snare, just anything that is a frequently running mode that allows you to at least use them a fair bit, because we just lack it comparatively to a lot of other competitive modes. But hey, maybe in the end it's just a get good scenario because the name of the game is Gotcha, but man, would a bit more shelf life for these units be nice because it definitely feels harder to keep up more now than ever. Still, I think the classic quote of favorites over meta will never age because that's what keeps the game fun for many. At least until you can't use your favorites anymore, but hopefully it won't get to that point.